Welcome to video 18 in a series of introductory videos for SOLIDCAM. This video's topic will be threading, or in this case, threading during a turning operation. Uh, we can begin, again, as always, by going to the ribbon and looking for the category of the toolpath we're looking for, in this case, SOLIDCAM turning and threading. Or you can also come over and right click on any toolpath or the operations folder, add turning operation, and you can see from your list here, threading. So programming a threading operation uh, is the same as the turning operations you saw in video 17, uh, where we're basically just going to choose a geometry. Um, in this case, I have created a simple bar stock that I'm just going to create into a, um, a threaded rod, maybe just on one end, I'm going to add a thread. So I'll go new geometry. I'll zoom in here. I've already done a turning operation on the outside. You can see that little bit of a difference there in the diameters. So I can just choose the line that represents the thread right there. Now, simple geometry of this bar stock is the whole thing. That's not a problem, because as you saw in video 17, I can go to modify geometry and modify the use of that particular selection right there. So I'm still gonna auto extend at the beginning of that chain to the front face there. Uh, but under the end extension, I'm just gonna cut it short by whatever amount. So I know I made this a, uh, a foot long. So I'm gonna cut it short by 10 inches. And you'll see that I'm only really gonna be threading the first two inches. And I did the same thing with turning. I actually turned this clean on, the, on this side for two inches. And then we're going to thread those first two inches of this bar stock. So that's helpful if the design does not actually include a specific geometry showing the thread. Um, in this case, uh, I just needed to thread this rod. I just brought in a simple design of, of the rod. I don't have to actually do anything here in terms of um, considerations as how deep the thread is going to go. The toolpath will control how deep I'm going to thread this part. This also allows you to do things like uh, turn a relief at the end of the thread. So in this case, um, I have turned the first two inches. I could probably cut this back by 10.5 inches. That way I have uh, a half inch of clearance between whatever turned part, or whatever turned um, uh, finish I've done there, and I can just thread that first, um, in this case, inch and a half. So green check mark to accept that. Tool selection in threading is exactly the same. You just pull it from your tool libraries, you create it as you go. I've actually created a tool beforehand, and that's my tool one. You can choose the type of insert, a triangle insert or a rectangular insert. And from the type of insert, you could put in your own parameters here, or you could choose it from the library. So in this case, you can choose the type of, of, um, of thread and then choose it from the library, and that should auto-populate the list there. Now, we'll just go with my, my list here. Okay, and let me just choose that tool once again. So green check mark to choose it. Mounting, as always, with all the turning, like you saw in video 17, uh, you're going to check the, the mounting of your tool. In this case, I want to make it come from the positive X direction. So I just click on that. And these items up here actually allow me to see what the tool will look like. So this icon attaches the tool to my cursor, and I can see that my tool is oriented correctly. Levels, as always with the turning, levels is really just the safety distance from the part. Under technology, we have control over the specific parameters of this toolpath. So in this case, we're doing uh, threading. We can either thread on the outside, the inside, on the face, and the back. So these four modes, as you saw in video 17, they exist for all the turning toolpath. Uh, work type, I can put a step down, or I can just do a single pass of my tool. In this case, I'm going to do step down. Number of starts, if you wanted to have number of starts along the thread, you could. So in this case, I just have it as, as one. Actually, if I just uncheck this, it'll remain as one. But if you wanted to add number of starts for your thread, you could. Uh, again, not only do you have the ability to choose from a table to define your tool, you can also continue to define the toolpath using that, that table. So we go to UN. Happen to know that I made this part as a two and a quarter, 4.5 TPI. So there you can see there's a 4.5 TPI. And because I chose from the table, it automatically determined the mini, uh, minor diameter for me. Um, now, if I didn't know what that was, I chose it from the table. But if you were doing a custom thread, you can go to user defined, and you can input your own threads per inch, minor diameter. Uh, the one little trick that I usually use is, if it is a standard size of thread, so in this case, let's say it is the two and a quarter, um, but the TPI is actually uh, finer. 
or, or different in any way. Um, I choose from the table to get my minor diameter, again, because just in case I didn't know it or I don't read it from the, the handbook, um, I could just put in a different TPI here. So that's one way to, to kind of shortcut the custom thread. You happen to know the custom thread TPI, but you might not automatically know the minor diameter. In this case, I'm just going to go with my, my selection from the table. Okay, so I've got that selected. Um, this is somewhat of a finishing operation down here. You can add an external finish for the actual outside. If I just hover over that, you'll see on the bottom left corner, a uh, thread for the outside there, or you can add a finishing inside uh, the thread it itself. And under cycles, you can tell it how to use that step down and how to machine out those threads. Again, you've got the, uh, the classical number three here, um, or you could do these other modes as well. And these icons show you that it's either gonna go right down the center there, start from one side from the other side, or kind of stagger it. So if we do a saving calculate on that, let's take a look at that toolpath in simulation, turning simulation. So we'll take a look at the end of the rod there. If I press play, you see a representation of the thread. There it is. And if we go to solid verify, I'll actually show you it as well. Let me just speed up that simulation. So it's a nice little cool function in the solid verify so you can see the actual helical thread forming on the part. So once again, threading is similar to the turning toolpath, but you've got uh, additional options here in obviously to, to denote the threads per inch and minor diameter. Um, one takeaway I usually recommend on, on the threading is the fact that you can modify the geometry. So I actually didn't do that here. I can go back to my modify geometry. And instead of relying on the lead in lead out, I can actually on the front side add a little bit of a lead in myself here. I think that's actually maybe a little easier to control. You can see that it actually extends the toolpath that far. So if you have any further questions on the threading toolpath or any other toolpath that you've seen in, the, in this, these series of videos, you can give us a call at 1-866-975-1115, extension 2. Or uh, you can check out the rest of the videos for the, uh, the other toolpaths. Thanks for watching.